How many of you remember the little child cartoon of the train that kept saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Rising, arriving at the very top of the hill says now suddenly, I thought I could. How wonderful it is to think about that kind of energy that's constantly echoing within our lives that says, I think I can. I think, and as I contemplate, then I do. And as I do, I realize the more and more I can. The challenge is, a lot of us don't believe in ourselves. And we don't believe that we can. And so we're at this uncomfortable place in life that says we want to go up the hill as that choo-choo-choo going up higher and higher. We want to ascend to that high place. But there's doubts, questions flooding our lives constantly. It says, who am I? And what makes you think I can? And what makes me think that I could? What is it within me that even gives me this ability? People have great expectations and they look to us and say, but I believe you can, but within we must believe in ourselves. Because if we don't, all our faith, all the stuff that we put together, all of our spiritual practices, they just become rituals then. If we're not living them out alive within us that says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Today's scripture text from the book of Acts says, God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Miracles working through Paul, through the hands of Paul. Today, we saw a beautiful Reiki demonstration of hands of Anne laid on Tyrone. We see that healing work that flows through us, each and every one of us, is possible. It's available to us. It can and will work through us as we embrace the spirit of I can and begin to believe in the power of God at work within us and believing in our own selves. How important it is, for Jesus was the great example. He believed in himself. Yes, he did, because he began to say, I am the Son of God. I believe this. He began to profess, I am the bread of life. I believe this. I am the way. He said, I am the truth. I am the life. I believe this. I believe this is who I am. He had this powerful experience within himself to say, I can believe in me because the divine is in me. I don't look at myself in this way that I may say that I am separated and removed from. Because one of our challenges is we may often look at ourselves and say, who am I? I can't do this. Because we come from a separation style theology that says God is far removed, certainly not dwelling within low me. God is not around me. God is not near me. God is distant. And I'm trying to cry out to call that God that is off in the skies to come and to be within my heart and my life because I am unworthy and I am unable at all times. Oh, we've been taught that. We sing it. We've learned it in so many of our church backgrounds where we sing over and over again how unworthy we are, what a wretch we are, what a worm we are, how that all the good things of God are not available to us. But I'm going to tell you this, that they are always promised to us. They are ours for us to claim. So it's not like we're asking for something that we don't deserve or isn't available to us when we understand that the blessings of God have always been laid out before us. The beginning is being able to believe these things. And most of all, to believe in our own self. Jesus, in his baptism experience, had this wonderful moment where the heavens opened up and there descended a dove and the voice from the heavens above says, this is my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Now, we may look at this and we want to take it literally as if the skies parted or clouds moved apart. And just so happened there was a bird flying by and it happened to just descend over Jesus. And then out of nowhere comes this voice as if it was echoing through the wind saying this exact phrase. Yet we look at this wonderful metaphor and a beautiful story and all its symbolisms. For the heavens to open up is simply meaning our consciousness, our awareness, our thoughts opening up. And the dove symbolizing this wonderful peace that, yes, once we've opened and awakened our consciousness, our thinking is so open to the divine, suddenly we're aware and we're full of the consciousness of the great love of God within our lives. Certainly it is like a dove descending. Oh, there couldn't be a better word picture than describes this beautiful idea of peace flooding over our lives. 
and a peace that's so comforting and assuring it simply says, I am pleased. You are my child. I am pleased. Because I want you to understand this very lesson in life is that the Spirit of God is constantly wanting to say, I am not angry with you. I am pleased with you. Ooh, now, that's a big shift for us because what we have grown up maybe is with this God that is always out there to punish and is angry and has issues with everything we do and we say and has str uh, struggling constantly to say, you know, you better shape up. You better walk in a straight and narrow. You better do this. You better do X, Y, and Z because I'm so displeased with you at any moment that I could rain down terror upon you and your team may lose the Super Bowl. Oh, did I say that? Oh, but that might be our thinking. That might be the way that we look at life. But I want you to understand that the very lesson of Jesus' baptism is your story as well. And the Spirit of God is saying to you in a higher consciousness, a heaven that's opened, I love you. I'm pleased. I love what you're doing. You are my child in whom I am well pleased. When I was a little kid, I tried to make a Mother's Day card for my mother. You know, as a little child, I thought I was quite creative, and so I got the paper and the glue stick and all uh, the watercolors and the water paints and began to make a mess all over the dining room table. It was quite the creation as I added the glitter that flew everywhere and all across the dining room uh, floor, and my mother looking at this mess as I, with a smiling face as a little five-year-old boy, handed her this card that says, suggested Happy Mother's Day. I don't think the words really were Happy Mother's Day as she saw pictures that I had drawn and how I had created a beautiful picture of her as this stick lady. Of course, she was very complimented that I had painted her quite so thin. Uh, and with gorgeous, gorgeous hair and all this wonderful stuff. And my mother looked at this messy, messy, not so beautiful card. And all she could say was, thank you, I'm pleased. I love this. It's beautiful. I see your efforts. I want you to say, understand that God also is saying the same to you today. I love you. I'm pleased. I see what you're doing. I see your efforts. I see the journey that you're doing. I see the creative efforts that you're making. I see the wonderful way that you're expressing yourself. I see all of this. And I'm not here in condemnation. Yet we have grown up in religions and ideas that God is there as the great condemner, the great punisher, and the great judge. And I want to echo this very thought that is found within the story of Jesus' experience and his great awakening and the baptism is he understood that God loves and God is pleased. And that pleasure, that love re resigns deep within. Now believe in yourself is not believing that you are better than or greater than because so many people want to say, oh, don't buy into this idea that you could believe in yourself because you're nothing. It's all God and you are zero. God 100% and you are just, you know, a nobody. You're just a human being. And yes, when we look at ourselves in our humanness, separate from the divine, we may see ourselves that way. But remember, God dwells within and you've been created in the image and the likeness of the divine. And there is no separation. Because what? You are the divine creation. The essence of God is within you. I look in the mirror sometimes, and as I'm growing older and older, I look at, whoa, wait a minute, there's my dad. Where did he come from? All of a sudden, I realize I am the revelation of Lloyd Gretz. As I get older and older, I look and I said, I remember in the 60s, he had black frame glasses like this. In fact, he had some sideburns that were going down and he brushed his, brushed his hair back and I'm thinking, and it was gray. And I'm like, oh, there is Lloyd Gretz. I am seeing the revelation of him, my father. It's in my DNA. That nose, it's a Lloyd Gretz nose. Yes. Uh huh. Some of these, uh, you know, character lines are symbolic of his character lines. And he had them in the same places. I don't call them wrinkles, remember? Uh, they're character lines. Uh, so we look at all this and we see that you know, I'm a revelation. The DNA of my father is within me. And the DNA of the divine is within you. You're something special. You're something amazing, something powerful. When you begin to realize that, you begin to understand it's more than just this physical body that you are. You are this divine creation 
filled with the DNA of the divine. And yes, you can begin to believe in yourself and the work and the power and the presence of God in you, working through you. For the Apostle Paul went about laying on hands with a great confidence in knowing that the power of God was in him, working through him, for him, and around him at all times. And when we awaken to this kind of experience, wow, it's transformational. When we realize if it happens for the Apostle Paul, it happens for us. If it happens for one, it happens for others. When we understand that experience, that means that we can believe in the power of God within us to do great things. And we... Like the little choo-choo can say, I can, I can. Even more than just I think I can, a proclamation of I can. I want you to understand that it's not the big man in the sky that we are looking for or discovering, but it is, and it's not the great somewhere out in heaven, but it is the real essence of the divine within you. For the heaven is within So when we talk about this higher consciousness that opened up, this heavens that opened up at Jesus' baptism, it's really the very message for you to say that the divine within you wants to open up your thinking, your consciousness wants to go broader and expand. It wants to open up in greater awareness. It wants to enlighten you to a wonderful and powerful way of understanding who and what you are and what you're capable of doing. Now those who down through the years have misunderstood the word heaven as some higher destination up in the sky, some place that we are going to go to only when you die, really miss out everything that Jesus taught. Because Jesus went over and over again teaching the kingdom of heaven is within you. Heaven is within. So where do we get the idea that heaven's out there somewhere next to Mars or Venus or somewhere out in the universe, somewhere out there is a destination, a place that we're going to go to when we die, that the soul is transported to another destination out there. When Jesus was so specific, in fact, he taught in five different parables trying to get this across to say that uh, heaven is really God as the mastermind working through me. God is the consciousness, this great infinite intelligence that is working in me. And that is the heaven experience. And you can experience it now. That's what so beautiful. You can go to heaven today, experience heaven today. You can walk in that wonderful higher consciousness and the awakening. For heaven is this condition of mind that we must awaken to. Jesus talked about it in different stories. He talked about the seed of a mustard seed that could be planted in heaven is like this and how it grows and flourishes. That means your understanding can grow and flourish within you. Jesus talked about that kingdom of heaven is like leaven or yeast that has worked into the dough and it expands and causes things to rise. That's the heaven that Jesus invites us to experience. Not some destination in the sky. Oh, but someone said, wait a minute. Did I not hear that streets of gold and pearly gates were part of heaven? And remember, all of these things are wonderful symbols and metaphors for us to understand that, yes, the experience of the heavenly encounter is that of walking on the wonderful abundance of God that it lays before you and you ground your feet and walk across those streets of gold. And that pearly gates is this wonderful symbol of that which we enter into this higher consciousness. They use these beautiful word pictures to help us understand. Now, we've taken them literally and we've missed the boat completely. Have you ever taken a phrase literally and you didn't really know what it meant, but you took it literally and misinterpreted everything? I can't. When I first came to America, I'd never heard some of the things that people would say and the phrases they would say, and I took them literally. The gentleman said, could you run to the store and grab a sandwich and step on it? And I said, why do you want me to step on your sandwich? (laughs) Some American thing. Everybody stamps on a sandwich. What is this about America? I don't know why you like that, but okay, all right, I'll get you a sandwich and I'll step on it. And then he came back and said, what's this? I said, what happened to the sandwich? You said, step on it. You see, I took it literally. How ridiculous. Exactly. I was making paninis back then. That's all. The treads on my shoes, they just left the panini mark. See, I was ahead of my time. I laugh at it, but that's how sometimes we are with Scripture. We look at a text and we take it literally. And we think then that heaven is somewhere out where heaven is within. And that's why when we awaken to that heaven experience, we can believe in ourselves. We can believe into this wonderful power and presence that's at work within us. 
And how can you believe in God in the sky when you don't even believe in God's creation? You and your abilities and the power of God that can work in and through you. But oh, we doubt it and question it and wonder if it's really real. So I want you to begin to understand that you are not nothing. You are something. God created you amazing and wonderful. And stop discounting who you are as if you live in the world of Walmart or Kmart and you're always a discounted item. But instead, understand your value. Understand who you are. That you are of great value in this world. And stop insulting the truth. When you begin to say, I am nothing and I can't do anything and it's not possible in me because that is not the truth. The very truth of God is that you're created in the likeness and image of God and in that image, all things are possible. So you can do it. You can. For the true experience is when you begin to believe in yourself is not what others believe in you because sometimes we've been waiting around to say, what do you believe in me? I'll believe it then. If you believe this about me, okay, I'll believe it then. We're always waiting for someone else to tell us, well, who am I? What am I? How do I fit in this world? Instead of beginning to believe in ourselves, and who cares about someone else's opinion when you begin to understand who you really are? Because until you do learn to believe in yourself, regardless of what other things other people think, you're not going to get very far in life. You're not going to get very far in the demonstration of the power of God. You're not going to get very far in releasing the goodness of God to the world around you. So it begins where you stop worrying about what others think and start being concerned about what you think about yourself and awaken. I know who I am. I am the divine expression of God. I know who I am and I can believe in the wonderful working of this divine expression I transform my thinking. I love this because we quote this scripture quite often. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We quote that scripture quite frequently as we think about the transformation that happens. Isn't it interesting? It says be transformed by the renewing of someone else's mind. Oh, no, it didn't say that, did it? It didn't say someone else's mind. It said be renewing of your own mind. So it's what you think. It's not what others think, but we're so caught up in a world around us where we're saying, what does everybody else think about me? What does everybody think? And I, what is their opinions and their ideas about me? Instead of standing in that holy, anointed confidence that God has instilled within you. He says, I know who I am. And I believe in me. And I believe in my abilities. And I believe in my God-given talents. And I believe in my God-given gifts. Because they are the expressions of the divine flowing in and through me. There are so many barriers to our mir miracles in our lives and the manifestations of them. And they are all wrapped up in the thoughts that we begin to think about ourselves. When the Bible says believe it, it means believe in the God in you. When it says you must believe, it's talking about you must believe in the manifestation, in the wonderful revelation, in the power and the presence, in the very essence of the God that is within you and awaken to that wonderful power. There was a judge at a state fair, went around tasting pies at the pie competition. One of my favorites, love to be there when they're handing out all those little samples. And you get to taste all these wonderful cooks and their great abilities. Miss Bessie May was there with her prize winning blueberry pie. And the judge came out and said, did you make it? I sure did, said Miss Bessie May. You bet, I'm very proud of it. And I, and it's, is it good? He said, oh, of course it's good. I made it. I made it and I don't make bad pies. And this pie is an example of who I am as a great cook, she says. And when you taste it, you experience my skill as a great baker. And you'll know exactly what kind of baker I am. So you better believe that this pie is good because it was made by me with the expertise of Miss Betsy May. It's written all over it. Wow. Well, that's you. That's me. We're created by God. And written all over it is the essence of the divine. Created, shaped, made, cooked by the great baker who creates this wonderful essence of who you are and made you in this divine way. And it's written all over you. When someone says, are you good? You say, of course I'm good. Why? Because the divine maker made me. And the essence of the divine maker is all over me. And I want you to see and experience that God don't make junk. It's good. It's good. 
In fact, in the creation story, when God completed all the creation, Genesis says, God says, it is good. Good. How beautiful that is. So what we do is embrace this wonderful spirit within us and helps us to believe who we are. We believe that we are the sons of God. Because the scripture says, beloved, now we are the sons of God. You're the son of God. You're the son of God. You're the son of God. What does that mean? It means that you're the firstborn. In the ancient times, to be the son, the firstborn son, was to be the one who was the heir to everything. You know? How wonderful. You're the heir. You're the firstborn. You're the son. You're the one who's there, who has everything available to them. Beloved, the scripture says, we are now sons of God and doth not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. When God appears within us, we will be like God. Here's the beautiful story then for our lives is how does God appear? God appears in our awakening, our awareness, in the heaven, in the consciousness, in the higher dwelling, in the awakening within our hearts and our lives. And when that happens, what does the text say? You're going to be like him. You're going to be revealing. You're going to be showing the world. When they look at you, they'll say, wow, I just saw God. I just saw God. I just saw the wonderful power and presence being revealed right here in this moment, in this in this room. How does it appear to us? It's that we shall see God as God is. We then see God revealed us and then we look around and say, I see exactly how God is. Because once you've awakened to the power within you and it's being revealed and manifested, we look around and we say, that was God. That was God. I was at a scene of an accident and there some people volunteered to rush into the flaming car and try to pull someone out before the car consumed their body. And people said, wow, that was God. That was God. Those people with all that boldness, all that energy, all that fervency, all that desire to go in and to save and to rescue, that was God. That was God. We think about all these experiences that we see. We've been seeing God all along, but we just don't acknowledge it because God is revealed through us. But we don't believe in ourselves. I'm not the revelation. We don't believe in ourselves. I can't do miracles. We don't believe in ourselves. I can't do great things. Acts chapter 19 that we read is a simple line. God brought miracles by the hands of Paul. When we begin to believe, miracles will be brought about by the hands of one another, by the actions of one another, by the movements of one another, by the ways that people will respond to the world's crisis and the world's needs. It will be there, and it is this moment when so many people say, you know what, miracles in the Bible, they were great. It's wonderful to read about Jesus feeding the 5,000. That ain't going to happen today. You know, it's wonderful to think about, you know, Jesus walking on water. That ain't going to happen today. You know, the apostles did all these wonderful miracles and they went about and healed. And yes, the apostle Paul, he brought about great miracles and worked through his hands. That's wonderful. But you know what? All those miracles, they died with Jesus and they died with the apostles. Because we don't have them today. Isn't that crazy to think that way? When we know that all of the Bible story is our story unfolding for us and calling us. And giving us the example and showing us the way that we too are the miracle workers. We are the hands of God. We're the ones. It's time to write the Now Testament. Not just look at the Old Testament or the New Testament, but it's time to write the Now Testament where we all begin to believe in ourselves and believe that the power of God is working in and through us and that when we lay hands on and when we move in the world and when we touch one another, we are demonstrating the very power and presence of God working in and through and around and always for us. Amen? So we need to say it out loud and proclaim, God is working through me right now. Say it with me. God is working through me right now. Do you believe that? Then you better say it extra loud. God is working through me right now. Because that's what it's all about. Believing in yourself to say, I am the revelation and God is at work right now in this body. God is at work through me right now. 
And when I reach out and extend a hand of love or a hug or embrace, it's the love of God. It's the embrace of God. When I reach out with the words of kindness and compassion and offer the support and prayers, it is the voice. It is the essence. It's the divine. It is God touching. And you are experiencing the divine. For God is working in you and through you right now. The presence of God is with you no matter where you are, I want to tell you this. And it's there to work through you. We look at the story of the prodigal son. You know, the story of the young man who took everything of his inheritance and ran off to a far country to squander it all. And when he had nothing left, he's at the lowest of low. And there he is eating the food that had been given to the pigs. He's at the lowest of low in sort of the pig pen of life. And I want to tell you, God is there. Never leaving nor forsaking. So no matter what experience you're going through, I want you to know that you can believe in yourself in the high and in the low and anywhere in between. Whatever you may be going through, that presence of God is with you. It's never left you nor forsaken you. It's not moving away from you. It's just that you have dimmed the vision and the awareness and stepped out of that heavenly consciousness and that higher awakening and begin to believe the voices of the world around you that say, you can't. You're not worthy. You have no value. It's not possible. You see, that presence is still there waiting to ignite that awareness in a, like a bright flame rising up within us when we're willing to say, I believe and I believe in me because God is in me. Now, you've had practice in believing yourself because as a child, you've done it before and so you can do it again. How many of you remember learning to walk? Okay, let's go back a little bit, you know. It wasn't just yesterday. Did you ever remember that? But we look at all the little babies, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our little kids, and we see them and we go, oh yes, that was me. I too began to rise up. I fell. I faltered. I began to believe that I could walk. I believed to put a foot forward and reach out and grab onto things and begin to move. And so I began enough to learn to walk. And today I'm inviting you to learn to walk again. But this time to walk as the miracle worker that you are. Because God wants to do some amazing things through you. Would you believe in yourself? Because you're a miracle worker. Would you believe in yourself that you are today's Apostle Paul? And that miracles are wrought as you lay hands, as you move out, as you touch the world. For God wants to see this miraculous power at work. It's time for us as a community, as a church, as individuals to say, I believe I can. I believe I can. I believe I can. Amen.